Bottles in this motherfucker. Cliff is here. What's popping, y'all? Um, you said you got surgery. You said you what? Though? You said you're um, nervous. Yeah, I got a little lipo. I'm getting so in a dr. Break that down for me. What the fuck is that? Lipo is like in your stomach. Like you know, they 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 suction the fat out. Um, I lost in the last year. I lost about like sixty to seventy pounds. So I probably am gonna have to do like a little mini tummy tuck because you know when you lose a lot of weight, you get like little extra skin. Um. That's all about what I'm doing, though. So you lost the weight, like, mm -hmm. um, organically? Mm -hmm. how, how was that? It was a, a big lifestyle change. Um, well, I didn't I didn't really do it by myself. I did do something. Um, like what? Talk to me. Come on, man. So a lot of people don't know. This is, like, the first time I'm talking about this. Thank but, you. But I did, do, <laughs> I did do something called a VSG surgery, and that is basically where they cut your stomach in half. Okay. So, like, I can't eat. Like, I'm not really supposed to eat over two ounces. Um, and I got it done in September. And I went from being 253 pounds to now 170. I'm like 175 pounds now. Congratulations. Thank you. I mean, so either way, you get it done. Um, yeah, I got it and done. What's the name of the surgery? What is VSG. It? VSG. Yeah. What type of, like, is that? Um, it's like a gastric surgery almost. Um I don't know. It, it just, it, I, I know it, I can't it. eat like that. Yeah. I'll Google it. You say you can't eat more than two ounces? Yeah. Like, I, I have, like, literally, if I go to McDonald's and I order, like, some chicken nuggets, I could probably eat one chicken nugget and maybe, like, two or three French fries. Damn. And then in, like, two or three hours, I'm back hungry. How was that? It's terrible. I'm not going to lie. Like, and I'm glad that I kind of waited to tell on this podcast. But a lot of my followers is like, now, I ain't going to lie. Before I did do the VSG, I was doing some diet pills by Dream Body Studio and they really did help. But I noticed like once I was able things mm -hmm. once I was able to kinda start back eating and like I started pigging out, it's like the weight would come back. It would double Instantly. up. It would just always double up and I, I just feel like when it came to food I never could really control myself. So the VSG basically has helped me maintain it. It's helped me just, you know, and I feel a lot better. Like imagine just like going to different stores, you know, Louis Vuitton, Christian Dior, and you know, you wanting to get into some jeans or some, you know, just all different types of clothes and you can't fit them. It's so, up and it's stuck now. Yeah. It's so up. now, now I'm, I'm, I can fit it. So the thing is though, cause mm -hmm. like, you know, niggas in Atlanta, you from up North, mm -hmm. I'm from up North, niggas like to eat. And yeah. I mean, you can't eat that much right now. Like, it, right. It, but you say it's worth it cause. It's definitely worth it. And I, I know how to cook really good. So it's like. It's, I ain't gonna lie, it's it's like a mental thing. Like, especially like while I'm cooking, I'm like, damn. Like, I'm cooking food for my boyfriend or my friends. I'm like, damn, I know this shit's about to be good. Then I eat one bite, now I'm full. Damn. It's it's a mental thing, but I feel like ultimately I would rather be slim than to enjoy food and just get bigger mm. and bigger. It's like, I really it. feel like I had an eating, cons. yeah, I feel like I had an eating disorder. Like, I just always was hungry. I think that's everybody. Like what? Mm -mm. Like everybody love to eat, especially in Atlanta. They got so much good food, places to go. Mm -mm. Like it, it was different. Like every, every maybe couple hours, I was going to cook out McDonald's, Burger King, oh, and you I'm like that. Yeah, and it was terrible. It was, it was terrible. I'm judging you. That's disgusting. I'm yeah, sorry. it was very disgusting. And then like I didn't want to work out. Mm. Um, and then like when I started getting big, I started to really like. I started trying to wear stuff to hide it, like bigger shirts, um, you know, just stuff to kind of camouflage it. But you can always tell all in my face. So VSG has helped me a Don't thousand feel bad, percent. Man. I ain't gonna lie. So I started wearing bigger shirts because of that too. I'm dead. I'm gonna keep it on it. Can we be honest? Like yeah. sometimes I'm judging you, nigga. I do the same shit. Like when I was younger, I was fit like a motherfucker. Yeah. Now I be grubbing out and I don't work out that much. Right. And I'm like, nah, I need my shirt. Like yeah. Big for real. For and real. you know, the older you get, the more the weight sticks on. Facts. You. And it's yeah. harder to get. It's in harder the gym. to get rid of it. Man, fuck these niggas. But look, niggas yeah. gotta get it done. Yeah. So you from Jersey? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Um. You doing this music thing, mm -hmm. and we gonna go all over the place because I all just right. wanna we we gonna talk about music. We are gonna talk about a lot of other things, right? Okay. How much of you would say your, your style, your music, your music style, is influenced by Jersey? So first, my motto 
is gorgeous gangsta, right? Mm-hmm. And that's my motto because I feel like up north, we are like natural gangsters. Like we are very hard. We're very aggressive. We're very like, you know, straight to the point. <laughs> Whether like down south, they're very like, well, I'm not going to lie because they definitely are ruthless out here as well. But they have more of a southern hospitality. Mm. So, and I feel like my dad, I get the whole gorgeous gangster thing from my dad because back in the day, my dad was like one of the biggest drug dealers. He is still to this day like an OG. Like he's really like into the streets very actively. Um, so um, I just feel like from me being raised around that, like that Jersey hardcore type of like environment um i just feel like it rubbed off on me like i'm really not the typical gay boy like I, like a lot of shit doesn't bother me i'm really straightforward i'm very blunt like i don't you know how like when people be like oh well how do you feel about little boozy like i don't care little boozy is not talking to me he's not talking about me i don't care you yeah, know like- <laughs> so i feel like that whole just up north i feel like we we kind of have to it's like we have to be kind of like Blunt and straightforward. You can't be sensitive, and it's we don't mean no harm. Even when you come here, I'm like, "Fuck you, mean." I'm saying all type of crazy yeah. shit, but it's like I'm not talking like I'm not just you know. Right. The, you can feel the love that makes yeah. sense, right? So, um, I definitely would say that. But what about the music though? Like, cause you know, is this the this long debate that I'm pretty sure you know about this Baltimore club, Jersey club, who right. started first? But even in that, and even in that that aspect, I see a lot of like artists coming from Baltimore trying to incorporate their music into into the mm-hmm. club sound. Are you influenced by any club music or anything? Mm-hmm. Nah. I'm not really influenced by the club scene. Now I do know back in the day, like I used to do like the whole Baltimore club music, the Wu Tang and the, you know, the sexy walking and all that. But I, you know, as you get older, you don't really do that type of shit no more. But one thing I will say is when I do hear that music. Sometimes it do make you want to dance, but as far as incorporating it in my music, not really. Um, it's just more so the mentality is what I incorporate in the music. It's crazy because um, you say that, and I kind of like knew that because I listened to a couple songs, mm-hmm. and you've been doing this for a minute, rapping. Uh, well, just being lit, yeah. In general, like yeah. I feel like you, like you crawled for a lot of people to walk, yeah. And I'm glad you said. <laughs> I wanna I, no so so and this is why I say bear with me and mm-hmm. to, the, to the audience. I need y'all bear with me too because we're gonna talk about music, but it's so it, it don't start there. Right, it doesn't. And, and I'm sorry, you're saying it's like it's hard to be like I can't force that. Right. I want to, but I can't. You know what right. I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Let's talk about this first. Okay. Um, the first thing that popped out to me mm-hmm. when so somebody sent you the rap on app. Shout out to them. They, they from the DMV too. Mm-hmm. Like you should you should interview uh him because uh. It would be controversial or some shit like that. Right. And I read the caption and it kept saying like using the pronoun him. Mm-hmm. And I see a lot of people do that. I think even see you do that. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I didn't understand because usually I would think you would want to be a girl called by a girl. Like, mm-hmm. talk to me. I don't... So, okay. I'm glad we're doing this podcast because I feel like, you know, over the years, a lot about me has changed. Like, you know, back in 2019, I had a show with BET and I made this big statement. I was like, you know, I don't want to be a girl. I'm a guy, you know, blah, blah, blah. So for the record, I feel like until, and this is just my opinion, Mm -hmm. until I come out with breast or until I say, hey, I'm doing hormones, I'm now trying to become a woman Mm. or... You know, because I, don't, I really don't know if this is a phase. Like, I really don't know. I may end up going back to wearing a mohawk, which I feel 100,000%. I never will. But when you're young and you're learning yourself and you're just like, you know, because you got to remember, like, this really isn't normal. It's not normal for a guy to wear hair and makeup and, you know, I'm not on no hormones. I'm not, you know, getting brass. Like, yeah, I might have a, a feminine body. It's It's so weird. But I feel like... I don't want to label myself. I just mm. want to be he. You, you who you Yeah, are. I want to be who I am. And I just feel like I'm Cliff. You know, until I say otherwise, then we're going to roll with that. But as of right now, it's Cliff, it's he, and that's just all. It's, and I say that popped out to me because, like, you know, as a journalist or somebody that do conduct interviews, I try to be respectful as possible. So, mm-hmm. like, when I see it, you know, I know what happens is somebody come out gay or say they're trans or they want to be referred right. by she in right. the world what happens is they're just they're so ignorant to it yeah. that they want to call you a guy because right. they know right? right and i didn't know if that was it and people were just intentionally not saying it but then i started right. doing more research and i'm like oh no this is what you go by and yeah. i was just wondering mm-hmm. wow um another thing that i saw was uh 
you you mentioned your pops mm-hmm. earlier or whatever. He was like he was real, real big in the streets. Mm-hmm. You wasn't accepted by your pops. Yeah, in the beginning I wasn't. In the oh, so when did that change? Um, I feel like it it really and I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I feel like it took the world to support me, and you know I feel like where. I'm from in Jersey, it's it's Pensgrove, and it's like a very, very small town. We don't really have, we don't have no celebrities there. It's like a town of like poverty. There's nobody there that's like me. I mean, there is, but. And not even physically, I'm talking about like star. Yeah, power. like, you know, and you have to remember, like when you have somebody and take away their sexuality, when you have somebody who is so talented, I'm not even talking about musically, because I feel like musically, I haven't even all the way tapped in yet. Mm -hmm. But I feel like when it came down to being a hairstylist, and you have somebody who is so young and so talented and know what they want out of life, Mm. I feel like you have no other option but to respect it. And I feel like it took my father to see that within me like it like wow my my son is really out here doing some big things and he's only 18 wow you know so after a while I feel like and then I'm grown you know so I feel like after a while he began to respect it like I you know uh last year was my first time being around my father wearing hair makeup you know I have like a big butt I have this body and I'm so nervous I'm like oh my god I don't know what my but he was so respectful like he didn't make me feel uncomfortable and I feel like that's the biggest thing is just making sure that as a a father or a parent your child is comfortable you know it's to the point where like my boyfriend is also super thorough like I don't even really like guys who act feminine and gay I feel like there should be one me personally I feel like there should be one feminine and one masculine my boyfriend is super masculine he's into like guns and dirt bikes he's like really and my dad and him they click like this like my dad calls him on his own you know so I just feel like it's a respect thing and I feel like once people get the whole gay the all that out of their minds they'll understand that like literally being a gay person, like you're human, you're you're like I like I bleed how you person? bleed, yeah, yeah exactly. like I fight how you fight, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like it literally but, has. But, but it, I mean, you fight like how I fight. But if I get my ass whipped by you or a straight man get it, it's yeah, gonna be it's bad. Yeah, <laughs> it, no, but it, it's happened so many times. Like people, a lot of men feel like, oh, he wear a wig. Oh, he likes men. Mm-mm. He can't fight. This is what they feel. They, they feel like this. Who, and I, who think that? A lot of men. Like I remember one time. It's been a couple times, like, I've had to get with some of my friends' boyfriends and shit. Like, I just don't play disrespect. I don't care who you are. Like, I'm probably, like, no shade. I'm probably more gangster than you are. Like, so you meaning, like, are. I, like I'm like i in traffic arguing with people. I'll pull my gun, and I have to stop doing that. But I, I will. That's just how I am. You know, but... Let me hide my shit. Make sure I'm my shit. dead. My, let me make sure my shit close. <laughs> I'm <laughs> dead. Niggas, I put my strap out. Fuck yeah, that. you know, so, so it's just like, I just feel like when it comes down to respecting, I feel like that's deserved. I feel like respect, any respect is due to a dog. Anybody. And I, I just love the fact that now my father respects it. Mm. And he's appreciative. I mean, he's accepting to so, it. So, I always try to play like devil's advocate or the other side of the gate, right? Mm-hmm. And, you know... And preparing for this interview, I, I tried to, like, you know, just look at a lot of other people's styles. Right. And I was watching the um, Dwayne Wade interview with uh, I Am Athlete because he did an interview talking about his, his son, mm-hmm. who they call their daughter now because that's what she want to be called. Right. And the things he was saying on the interview was basically, like, you know, I guess she was watching something and somebody was gay or whatever, and they was putting them out. Mm -hmm. And he was putting him out because he was gay. Same with, I think, uh, Saucy Santana had a a similar situation where Mm -hmm. his mother was, like, um, start throwing all his clothes away and stuff like that. Because, like, if you're going to be grown, you you can't be grown under my roof. And it's weird because that's an experience that I experienced with my parents. Like, my mamas are always like, I'm going to love you, but if you ever be gay, you never want to stay under my roof. So, as I became an adult, I used to always say, you know, I don't have no problem with gay people or, or... People that um, call themselves gay, but if my my child was gay, I would love him. But they just couldn't live with me because that's all I saw. Right. I say that to say full circle. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe your father just didn't know how to accept it because of the generation before him. Maybe yeah. he didn't come accepting you because of the world accepting you. Maybe he just didn't know how to. And and I'm not gonna lie, like I remember growing up and I remember hearing him and my mom, him and my mom have a conversation, 
And I remember like this is, you know, every child around the age of 14, 15, 16, they start developing a mouth and Mm. they start getting into this mentality like where they can beat the world and ain't nobody going to talk to them crazy. And I remember I used to have like little mannequins and doll babe, not doll babe, mannequins, and I would hide them under my bed. And every week when I got an allowance, I would go on Amazon and I would order these mannequins. And it just seemed like every month. While I'm at school, why is my dad doing a deep clean in my room? And why is he going under my bed and throwing my mannequins away? And I remember one day I came home and I did these fire ass braids on this mannequin. And I noticed the mannequin wasn't under the bed no more. Oh, well, all hell broke loose. At this point, like that was a masterpiece I created and you threw it away. And I remember me and him got into it. And I remember him going in a room and telling my mom, I'm not raising no faggot. If I wanted to have a girl, I would have had a girl. But I also have three sisters. Mm. So it's just like, I don't know. I just feel like people don't really think. like, And I'm not going to lie. I feel like I was born this way. Like, I don't feel like this is something that somebody can make you or, you know, as a child I seen. Like, I never was a child that got touched or anything or around people like that. I just knew what I came out the womb like. I knew what I wanted. Not 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 like that. Meaning like I know I didn't I wasn't attracted to no girl. You know, as, as a as a, a child, as a um an infant growing up as a child, I looked at girls and women as Barbie dolls. I looked at them like I wanted to play in Master their hair. Piece, which I call a muse, muse or no? Is that what it's called? A muse? Um, um, a muse is like a model. Oh, okay. Yeah, you but probably I probably looked at them like somebody. Yeah, like I did. Like on. I used to go up to girls and just like play in their hair and stuff. And I remember like you know, whether if it was my sisters or my, like, grandma's friends, they but like, you going to be my boyfriend? And I'll be looking at them like, you too big. <laughs> like, you know, knowing deep down inside, hell no. Hell mm-hmm. no, I ain't going to be a boyfriend. Wait, so did you ever have an experience with a girl? I kissed a girl. That's it. Mm. That's it. So I say all this to say, um, we was talking about how, like, before we was like, you had to cross so so many people can walk. Mm-hmm. You always knowing this, mm-hmm. right? Um and just asking around you was lit at a young age mm-hmm. like i mean kind of how it would be the equivalent and i ain't trying to be disrespectful but i'm sorry it would be the equivalent to how like our superstars had to grow up like bow wow right you know what i'm saying little romeo and i say these people because it was like once they became adults we wasn't able to accept them because we, we we kept Looking we only sell them as, as ch- children mm-hmm. as far as your business right mm-hmm. do you feel like it you was at a disadvantage being lit so early no. So you think you still get the same respect? Of course. Mm. And I'm not settling for nothing underneath. So when I say respect, I mean, people, do you think people still look at you the same when they was looking? How you when you were 17? No. I, I I don't think so. That's and what I, I'm and I say this because, you know, I stopped doing hair in 2017, and a lot of people are like, "Oh, Cliff fell off." Oh, he, no, just because like you should be happy that I was in a position to be able to say. I'm not doing hair no more. I'm not taking no more clients. I'm moving on to something else. And I did that because you have to remember, I toured all across the world with different artists. I taught classes all around the world. I did clients in every single city. I I literally was doing all of this stuff when I was 16. I was 16 years old in high school having a full roster of celebrity clients. And I had a talent that was undeniable. Mm -hmm. Once you get to a certain point when you're running laps around people, It is not fun no more. Mm. It's super boring. And it's like, I was bored. And I like to be uncomfortable. I like to have, like, something to work towards. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like music was, like, the next thing, in my opinion, because I knew nothing about it. Um, I knew how to rhyme. I knew how to sometimes. I'm a really good writer. I feel like I can speak very well. But when it came down to music, I felt like that was an industry that I really always was interested in. And I wanted to be uncomfortable. So do you ever look back and say, damn, man, I wish I would have went about it another way? Because you still could have no, made music. No, if, because if, if I want to get back in this hair game right now, today, like if I left here and said, I'm going to rap and I'm going to do hair, it would be over for everybody. So let me ask you why. Because I feel like, and you could take, because I'm a stranger. Mm-hmm. And what I mean by that, I didn't know nothing about, like, you know, like the right. hair, how lit you was. Like, mm-hmm. I'm. I'm a completely a stranger. All this is just from research that I've done. Mm-hmm. And from when, I, when I'm asking, right, I got one, I'm glad you said it first because, like, I, I guess one person was like, Cliff was like 
a superstar, mm-hmm. young, right. like way before everybody, for mm-hmm. real. But like, I don't know, he just fell off or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I, by you saying it, I know it. You hear it, you right. know. You don't never like that. Don't never hurt your feelings. You never think about like, damn, what if? Um, it does sometimes, but I'm not gonna lie. Like, I have a a bigger vision for myself, and right now I'm kind of like reinventing myself a little bit. Um, that's like if Nicki Minaj was to say today, like, oh, I'm I'm not gonna rap no more. I'm gonna be a doctor. Mm. Of course, people are gonna say she fell off because they're used to her for one thing, and mm-hmm. that's music. However. Right now, I'm doing my groundwork, and I'm trying to implant it in people's heads. Like, listen, I'm going to be an artist now. I don't care how you feel. I'm going to be an artist. And eventually, I know, because anything I say I'm going to do, I do it. Like, I remember being 16, standing in front of my cosmetology class and telling them, I'm going to be a big celebrity hairstylist. And everybody laughed. Mm -hmm. Everybody was like, boy, go ahead, whatever. And look what happened. I remember seeing I was going to have my own TV show. Everybody, okay, whatever, Cliff. Boom, B-E-T. What happened? B E T. <laughs> so, music is not an overnight thing, you know, and you have to stay down until you come up. And when my come up comes, it's so, it's just going to be like a win win because people already know me for hair back in the day. Now it's just going to amplify it. So you want to talk about music? I know that, right? Mm-hmm. So let's let's have a real conversation. Okay. You've been doing music. You ain't just start music. Yeah, like twenty eighteen. I mean that's not yes that's not just yesterday though, but I feel like I haven't fully like tapped into it yet. So you telling me you want me as a consumer, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm glad we set the stage so you know we just we just okay. we rapping. If, if I'm a consumer, mm-hmm. right, and I wanna you want me to take your music serious, mm-hmm. but you've been rapping since 2018. How many how many projects you, you put out? Since I haven't since? put out a project yet. You ain't put out a project yet. How many? Mm-hmm. How, so I, if we look if we look on um, iTunes, I think you dropped one song just recently, right? Mm-hmm. And like um. April. Mm-hmm. The rest of it is like 2021. Mm-hmm. But you're telling me you want me to take you serious as an artist. Mm-hmm. How? Because I feel like I have talent. And when it comes, and I know this is something I'm working with as far as being consistent. Mm-hmm. And shout out to my new team that I just got. Under shout out to the me. gang. Yes. However, I feel like a lot of it lacked within me having so many things going on because mm. outside of being an artist i am I'm, I'm an entrepreneur i have a business i have a lifestyle to maintain so i i don't have nobody putting money behind me i don't have you know a lot of these artists who are getting signed who you know are established they have somebody who is putting money behind them i have rent to pay i have a car note that's the fucking price of my rent i have employees to pay like i have so much i have going on so music doesn't pay me and I have to do what pays me and then do my music. But however, I feel like this is going to be the year. And remember this. This is going to be I'm the year remember. that I'm going to be super consistent. And I'm just going to. So it was a time where you was doing hair. Mm-hmm. And guess how many days of the week you was doing hair? You know. Every fucking day. Yes. Every I mean, day. my bad. I'm no, you good. You can okay. guess. It's good. You was doing hair every single day. Mm-hmm. And you became Cliff. But wait, don't get it. Conscrewed. I'm in the studio at least three or four times a week. Okay. I just don't put it out. But that don't that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I I can care less about you being in a studio. Right, no, no. Talk, but talk. guess what? I feel like as an artist, like, and this is another thing, right? Like, let's not act like I was, I, 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 I started rapping in 2018 and I just like, was like, okay, single here, single there. I don't want to, no, I, as an artist, I have, you have to study your craft. Mm-hmm. I like every day for months, I write, I watched, um, what was it with Big Tigger on BET? Uh, Big Tigger in the basement, rap, the rap sitting in the basement. Yeah, I, I, oh my God, I studied that because I wanted to improve my bars. I did artist development for literally mm. like two years straight. Damn. So as an artist, and this is where a lot of artists get it misconstrued, they they come out with a song and it might go viral, but they have no star power. They know nothing about hip hop. You know, they know nothing about the history. They don't, like, I study people like Foxy Brown, mm. Little Kim. I study their era. I study how, like, they, they act in their videos, like, their demeanor. All of that stuff matters as an artist. And I feel like, you know, once I'm ready, which I'm ready now, but for a while I felt like I wasn't ready. I felt like there was a lot more I felt like I wanted to know about music because it's not like hair. I went to school for hair. I'm teaching myself every as far as rhyming, as far as like punchlines, metaphor. I'm doing this myself, so it's like I have to take time myself and really understand it and really get down to the get down before I really just start 
throwing stuff out. How do you think the feedback is so far for your music? I feel like, you know, the last couple, like the last 2021 and 2022, they're fucking with it. They fucking with it? Yeah. I say that because when I listen to the music, you know, um, it's so easy to be judgmental, mm-hmm. right? Like, it's um, it's easy to judge a book by its cover. When I listen to it, I actually think you can rap. Mm-hmm. But I was curious to ask you this. Like, do you think that's... The, do you think that's part of the problem? Because like you hear these music, because you ain't the only one that's doing this. Like, of course we got Saucy Santana. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if Roland Ray made it. I don't know. It's so many people up in the LGBTQ community that's making music. So we can't we can't really let the head that be a cl- crush now because it's, right. it's 2022 at this point. Right. But when you hear the music that uh, Santana is making, right? It's like it's all about. It's like it's really speaking from the girl perspective, like twerking and, and walking all that. Mm-hmm. And you are speaking from a girl perspective, but you're really rapping though. Right. Like you're rapping. Mm-hmm. And it can, I don't know, like. I just really feel like it's me. my consistency. I really do. Okay. This year, y'all going to see me be so consistent like this. I'm going to make sure that the remainder of the year, I'm going to, I just really feel like it's my consistency. I feel like as long as I can stay consistent and not even with being consistent, because I'm not going to lie, for a while, I didn't have a team. I didn't mm-hmm. have no, like, I didn't have people behind me like even on days that i woke up and said you know what i don't want to be a fucking rapper no more Mm. guess what i gotta motivate myself i don't have nobody behind me like cliff ain't no quitting ain't no like no or when i gotta like because i not only am i paying my bills i'm paying my mom's bills i'm paying my grandma so you know i have shit i like i'm i'm working towards like it's not just a one man you know it's not like somebody a label just signed me and i got millions no i have to work for what I want. Mm. And if the money isn't rolling in, like I care about my, like no shade, I care about my money more than I care about somebody taking me serious with music. Mm. I used to. Now I'll go broke for the music. Mm. You know, because I feel like it's not, like all you have to do is be consistent. And I feel like that's my problem. Do you feel like you you need like one of those party songs? You feel like pressure from that? Because I feel like the music I hear is not party for me. I, like, I'm hearing rap. I just feel like I'm still kind of figuring out my sound. I don't know if I want to go more pop. I don't know if I want to go more, like, trap. I like, But me personally, I feel like with how I rap and how rough I am, I don't really feel like that's my style. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't think so either, but that's yeah. why. But it could be that and, could and, be a and harder And I'm not going to lie, like, my manager could tell you, she says that I... In the past, I've dropped all the wrong songs. Like, if you listen to my catalog of music, like the other day we sat down and we it's all gangsta to literally, shit. It's gangsta shit. <laughs> it's like shit like it's that. All like, you'll be like, okay. And I feel like the stuff I try to put out is like twerky. And that's not me. Mm. I, like, I mean, it's me. That's I like that music, but that's not my sound. That's not what's going to gravitate the people. Like the shit you did with uh, Saucy Santana. Yeah, like that's not my sound. You could tell. But I, I feel like I did it because I'm like, I got Santana on the track. Like, let's, like, do it big. You know, but, I, I mean, I, I did the best I could. Shit. It's, all, it's all good. Yeah. I feel like what people don't understand, let's not get it fucked up. Let's not get it fucked up. Mm-hmm. I understand and I empathize with, like, you taking care of your parents. Like, if you, if God forbid, if it, if it stopped today, you're right. a legend. Like, you did a lot of shit. Let's not get it. Like, I don't even want to seem like I'm coming off right. saying any other thing. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But I'm just speaking of towards the creative art of it people you know how they say so what you going through that you right keep working you get what i'm trying right. to say that's all i'm speaking towards right um speaking about this like so it's like you got to re- reinvent yourself mm-hmm. going back to the hair do you feel like when you when you made the change of like because you was dressing like a boy at once mm-hmm. like you was cliff mm-hmm. guy you had mohawk things like right. that and then you was like no nah, i want to do this mm-hmm. did you you even re- you didn't really prepare your audience for that do you think I don't feel like I need to you ain't need to but do you think that have impacted the people no, that supported you no you don't think so I, I mean I feel like we had like no shade to women I love women but I feel like you have some women who are just like they see a boy the boy has hair and makeup on his his glam is together he's dressing good you know they might feel like their man might like look at me you know or something <laughs> and they're instantly like hating okay, okay. you know and I feel like a lot of my followers was like that. A lot of my women were like that. But, I, like, when people, like, actually get to meet me, I'm so sweet. I don't be on that type of time. I'm very uplifting. But I just say that to say this. Like, and remember this interview. Anybody that's watching, remember this interview. 
this is going to be the year that y'all see a lot of changes within me and my brand. Just me as like a total powerhouse name. Like not only do I want to be an artist, but I want to have like big brand deals with like Mac and Maybelline. And, you know, I just want to really and I, and I want to tap into my community. Like I want to really because, you know, my community is very. We're very misunderstood. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like 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 me and you were just talking about how you was like, oh, you know, I, like, I don't know. I didn't know if you wanted to be like a girl. You know, a lot of us are very misunderstood. So I just want to be like that voice for my community. But I also want to be musically where I want to be. And I commend that. And what I'm saying, I, like, when I hear you speak, I feel like it's almost like, how can I put it? Like, you're too down to earth. Right? Because I feel like when I'm, I'm listening to you, mm-hmm. you sound like me. But in all respect, like, you're not me. Like, you're like the goat in what you do I, I, I'm dope at what I do don't get it fucked up but right. like, I'm just giving you respect right and I, it sounds like you want an understanding from people who, I don't want no oh. fuck them but yeah, like when I'm hearing you right when mm-hmm. I'm hearing you just, just it's, it's like well I ain't gonna lie though cause when I used to be a hairstylist I used to be a snob I'm, mm, I used to be okay. a fucking snob and this is me at a young age just feeling myself like and I'm not gonna lie I feel like I turned a lot of people off like mm people and and not even being a snob but like if i see somebody at the hair show and they're like clip they're coming up to me they're crying they're like oh my god right and i'm like hey yeah okay (laughs) get her away from me okay you know but it it just was because i was so young i wasn't used to that right but now i just feel like the best way to do things is to stay humble be a Mm -hmm. humble beast and that's what i want to be a humble beast like i don't care how far i go i want to maintain and be the same humble genuine hearted person that i always have been right and i don't ever want to change it i want to get back to the switch right when i say the switch the switch from like cliff the guy that we see to cliff Mm -hmm. with the when dressing like a girl or makeup and things like that Mm -hmm. right i and you say you don't think that it caught people by surprise or like you it think did. here i mean it was it was a slow transition it was like okay. i was wearing the hair one minute then i would go back to the mohawk like it was like i would put my foot in and then take it Use out one foot in one foot out yeah then like after a while i just said fuck, fuck it. it yeah yeah no i i was asking that because like we keep saying this fucking room might be the title of the interview you had to cross over so many people can walk and i feel like right. when you made that transition it might was uncomfortable for your audience mm-hmm. and they didn't know how to take it because one thing about humans is like we hate different yeah. right I feel like you was probably one of the first to do that. And then you were so lit. And it's like, what the fuck? Yeah. But now anybody can do it now. And it's like, yeah. they praise them. Yeah. Do you ever think of, do you ever look at your peers and be like, damn, like these motherfuckers got lucky. Cause I wasn't so lucky. when No. I, Cause no. I don't, I, I feel like what's meant for me is meant for me. What's meant for anybody else is meant for them. Like that's like Nikki. Nikki has crawled so so many can run. Mm. Same thing with me. If you know, you know. If you don't, you don't. It's not my responsibility to school you on what I've done, mm. how I've impacted this industry. It's not my response. Like, you know what I'm saying? I feel like the people who know, they know. The people who don't, you'll just still try to figure it out. <laughs> I say that because we are human, though. So yeah. we have our moments when we in the house and, like, you get frustrated. Mm-hmm. And that's really what I want to talk to. Because I, I, when I talk to people, I always try to dig deeper in, into those conversations. Like, how do you feel when nobody around, when you're in, when you're in a room by yourself? I feel good as fuck. Okay. I lost all this weight. Like, what I'm, what I, I, I'm, I, I get money every day. This is true. I ain't counting nobody else's pockets. You know, I feel good. But you are trying to reinvent yourself. I am. Again, I think. Right. With the so music. wait, you feel like because I'm trying to reinvent myself, do you feel like I'm like depressed or something? Fuck no, I don't. Hell no, like <laughs> no, nah, like ain't should to be depressed about. I just can. I'm trying to imagine being super lit in something, mm-hmm. right, and then trying to reach for a different goal, kind of like Kanye West, right? right? Kanye West is Kanye West and making beats, right? right. So that's why I would never, I would never like uh, doubt you because I've seen it. Kanye West is one of my favorite people, right? So like I say, like. Kanye West is a, a superstar at making beats. Right. But he was like, I want to rap, and niggas ain't take him serious. Mm-hmm. And I'm trying to pick your mind and understand, like, how do you feel of, like, being so dope in some some areas, and you trying to show people, trying to prove people that I can rap, I'm a rap, I'm a rapper, take me serious. Mm-hmm. But it's like, it's taking time, I guess. It's not it's not right. the same cliff that was doing hair. Right. That's why I'm trying to understand how you feel about that. Like, what, when you're in a house, and you see these people, your peers, that mm-hmm. that, that, that had similar routes to you. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And, like, I, I see it. And I'm just doing it, uh, two hours worth of research. research so well, I'm I not going to lie. Like, and I feel like, I don't know if it's this barely. <laughs> <laughs> like, be real. That's but I feel what. like a lot, a lot of people know. Take some more. I feel like a lot of people have had platforms. I feel like... um. 
whether if it's been like a TV show, whether if it's been like a, you know, people like that are lit that they hang around. I feel like I've always grinded on my own. Mm. I'm like literally self-made. Nobody can say they made me. Nobody can say like, oh, I put Cliff, like literally Cliff put Cliff on. Fucks. So I don't even remember what she just asked me. <laughs> like, I think this, I understand <laughs> what you're saying though. So sometimes people might get... um endorsements by but wait this this is why i would never be upset and never be sad right if music doesn't work out i swear to god i can make a post right now while we in this office and i can say back taking appointments do you know how much money i would get i believe you like do you know like now i wouldn't be um washed up or whatever they be saying you know now i would be back to go oh my god clip, yeah. clip, clip. So I'm not worried about anything because they're going to fall on a bandwagon eventually with my music. Okay. So I think you're comfortable because, like, you already know, like, bro, if I wanted to. Yeah. No, that's, like, real shit. Okay. Like, it's just right now, let me be an artist and let me do the groundwork and let me show y'all why. Like, as a hairstylist, when I was 16, I ain't going to lie, it was hard because I had so many older stylists, like, trying to compete with me, argue with me, beef with me, putting their business cards in front of my shop. Like, you know, creating a beef in me being so young. I'm ready to get shit cracking. I'm mm. ready to fight. I'm ready, you know, and people used to tell me like, Cliff, you can't do that. Just let it show in your work. So as an artist, I want to, I don't, I don't want sympathy. I don't want people, oh, well, let's go listen to Cliff music because whatever he's seen. I want people to actually see like this motherfucker is grinding. Yeah. This motherfucker is really hustling and he really deserves to be wherever he's trying to be. I fuck with that. Absolutely. And I can, I can, I can actually um, hear the growth because I think you did an interview uh two years ago maybe three years ago and you were saying like that was one of the things that you was um working towards and that was like not not really taking what everybody say so personal or yeah. something like like being famous i guess because i yeah. think that's hard like people don't understand like people are famous they still regular people mm -hmm. so you say something to me that's disrespectful i'm still trying to but you still got a slow yeah. bit of snap being used. You think so it sounds like it because you're like niggas ain't about to niggas ain't gonna disrespect me no they're not <laughs> but what's disrespect to you what was this about anything i feel like is disrespect if you um nigga said anything niggas is crazy. no not What's saying it like anything that I but I, i'm like just saying like you, anything I feel like. like anytime i feel like something is out of context and mm -hmm. it's like who the fuck are you talking like that's when i feel disrespect like or like people be thinking they disrespecting me when they be like oh he she ooh, i'm sorry i'm like that i don't care about that right. because i know a lot of people looking at me or like you know looking at what I have going on, a lot of people don't know how to, um, you know, like take how it. to cope with that. Yeah. yeah. Don't so I don't, it. I don't be feeling disrespect with that. Okay. So what's, what is something that like, I guess if somebody comment under your picture, some wild shit, is that disrespect? Yeah. Um, and sometimes I really do be arguing back with them and it's just like, and then I be having my boyfriend getting on me like, what, what you, you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? Why are you arguing with them? Like block them facts like i'm just thinking so do you think you have a do you think it's hard to be like famous because if you think if you arguing with somebody in your comments i mean that's like i mean i will say being an influencer being in the limelight sometimes having you know like followers and stuff i feel like a lot of people feel like you owe them something mm. a lot of people feel like you owe them validation like I, first of all let me just say this this is probably why you feel like i'm so humble I don't need validation to know, like, who I am and what I do. I don't need a crowd. I don't need a posse. I'm a one-man show. Like, I, I know what I'm capable of. And another thing, a lot of these, like, rappers and people who have shit going on, they don't have no talent. Mm. Like, meaning, like, outside of rapping, what the fuck can you do? Like, who don't have talent since you, since I'm, you said I, I don't know who. Like, I'm just saying, <laughs> like... You know, like it's like what what can you do I'm outside? You. It's it's no, it's serious. It's like what can you do outside of being a, an influencer or a rapper or whatever? What can you do? What 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 do you have to show for? If the rapping is dead today or tomorrow, what can you do? So, this is true, and I see the talent for sure. Let's talk about this though. Oh my god, <laughs> for real, bro. Listen, you didn't work with people. Mm -hmm. You didn't work with people before people became who they were. Before people became people. Mm -hmm. And you, I hear you say you self-made, you you doing all, you, you did everything by yourself, mm -hmm. and it's other people that might have got co-signs and that helped their career. Mm -hmm. 
But you in a position where you can get a cosign from a couple people. I don't want a cosign. Mm. I don't want people to look at me and say, oh, only reason why he on is because I don't want that. So. Because I feel like you don't last long like that. Oh, hold up. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. You ain't about to just say that on this platform. Let, 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 let me challenge you respectfully. Yeah, take your sip. Respectfully. <laughs> we got some niggas that's giving Grammys on Instagram. Like, we didn't see Drake post Kodak Black. And Kodak Black is still probably one of the hottest niggas out right now. We didn't see people like, you know, like just endorse but I, somebody. I feel like Instagram and social media isn't as authentic as it was in 2015, 2016. Okay. I feel like now you got the actual fans thinking that they're fucking celebrities. And they're just talking <laughs> out the side of their asses and stuff. And it's just like. Back in the day, you could post somebody business and they can blow up. Mm. Now you got to post that person 10 times for them to even get... A hundred followers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like, it's hard. It's, it's, yeah, it, yeah, it's not like that. Yeah, so I just, I'd rather just work, you know, and, and I'd rather, like, I've always been the type of person, like, I'd rather show you better than I could tell you. Like, even being young, I remember in Delaware, like, I would be, like, about to catch the bus to go to work to do whatever I was doing, maybe if it was hair or journeys or whatever. And I remember like women like, oh, you do hair? And I'd be like, mm-hmm. <laughs> and they'd be like, how old are you? I'd be like 16. They'd be like, child, my nephew do it. Like, and they would be like, bitch. You don't even know, nigga. Yeah, like you really don't know. Like, bitch, I will slay the fuck out your hair. Like, but I've always been the type of person like, I'd rather show you than I can tell you. So we back and forth, like we said, right? We're going to music, hair, all this, right? Mm -hmm. Question, why do so many ladies, um, Cause I just interviewed two girls. They got something called Beyond the Cheer podcast. Shout out to them, dope. But it's like everybody that gets in that position, it's like they get to a point where they super lit, and they like I ain't doing it no more. Like why? It's like you're it's, just it's so much. It like oh my god. Let me tell you, as a hairstylist, like once I moved to Atlanta, life started to hit me as far as like social media, as far as like clout chasers. Um, at one point I was known as the biggest scammer. At one point I was known you as finessing too. I wasn't fucking finessing. Oh, right. I'm like, so how did you know you that then? No, I, I promise you. Oh, like right, I'm right. I'm I'm literally a natural giver. Get, I okay. promise you this. Like I never have had to finesse. You know, it, it might have been you did time. is okay. Just no, tell me I, off I, camera I'm gonna keep it real. It. I'm I'm gonna keep it real with you. Right. I used to charge like four or five hundred dollars for installs. I ain't had to finesse for nothing. Okay. My bad, my bad. No, that's no, right. <laughs> but um like, let's just say, like, I remember on my 19th birthday, I did a hair sale. And I was selling hair. And I remember in three hours, I had made, like, $20, $27,000, right? Damn. And the platform who was accepting the payments, they locked my money up for months. And they weren't really telling me, like, oh, well, we'll release it this day or whatever. So I remember, like, not really knowing what to do with people's orders. And I don't know if people thought I was going to spend my own money to, you know, order the hair and ship it to them and then have, you know, basically make a long story short, being so young, like I, I didn't really have the guidance, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And, and, you know, for a while I was being looked at as a scammer or people would come to the salon and like try to pick with me knowing I'm a snap out. And I don't know. I just, a, a lot of that type of stuff, it just really, like, I feel like my peace means more than anything. So as a hairstylist, when you have to deal with these things, it's just like fuck no. Damn. Yeah, like because like on the outside, I would see like yo, like when, like I got some, we got somebody from Baltimore that's super lit at doing hair. Um, mm. and I remember like when she was like she had said she was quitting the chair. And I'm like, what the fuck? You just got yeah. super lit. And I was just like, I don't understand it. And I hear these girls that I had on the podcast. They like beyond the chair, and it's like, bro, like you hear that so often from hairstylists, and right. like, they just trying to get past that. Yeah. But, um, I mean, but I, I never the goal was to never be behind the chair for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. I mean, what the hell? I started when I was 15. So it was only a, a you know, amount of time that, like, the goal is to be rich. I'm talking rich, rich. So it's only but so rich you can get behind the chair. Like, you know? Now, you got, you, you said you was, like, worth a couple mil. Did you ever see a million, like, I did. All together? Yes. Damn. That's yeah, fire. I did. I thought, because, I mean, you know. Get, and when get, I get signed, I'm going to definitely see more millions. You trying to get signed? Yeah, I'm trying to get signed. So, I'm tired well, of spending I, I, my own money. I don't want to spend my own money. You want to spend your money? I don't want to spend my own money. It's just a loan. But as a label, when you get signed to a label, they can do so much for you. They can get you all types of endorsements and brand deals, and you're here, you're there, you're on this billboard, you're there. You have this feature with this art. Like I'd rather be signed. 
Yeah, I feel you. I, I don't know. I don't. I'm. I'm a guy. Just that, think about that, it. That if, if, if if I'm signed and I still have everything I'm I have going on, like with my vendors list and you know selling hair or whatever, I would be like, a okay. I mean, I mean, I think you're a okay now. Like no, but I would be <laughs> a a a okay. <laughs> like a, yeah. Okay. Yo, question: Do you do uh therapy at all? No. You never did therapy. Mm. Mm. I just feel like that's bullshit. How you just get, how was it bullshit, first of all? Cause like I remember I had this girl working for me, right? Like therapists, they be like they be trying to like diagnose you with shit, right? So I remember I had this girl and she had a ther well, she was my assistant and she used to have a therapist, right? And she used to act a little white sometimes. Her name was <laughs> Kayla. And um we would be like working and shit. And like let's say if I yell at her, she would be like, Oh my god, I have to take my depressant medicine. And I just remember one day I turned around, I was like, bitch. Like that, all that shit is fake as fuck. Like you don't even need no medicine, bitch. Like stop playing with me, right? So I remember she just stopped taking the medicine and everything was still fine. Like, and I just feel like there, I don't know. I just feel like it's, it's all a waste of money. Like I could talk to my boyfriend or my mom or somebody, you know, who ain't going to judge me. Interesting. Because therapists be being messy too. You think so? They be going home telling their kids, hell yeah. See, if I, I was a therapist, I would. That's because you ain't shit. Yeah, <laughs> that's I, because you ain't shit don't mean your therapist Yeah, I, shit. I would be like, yeah, it was this girl today. She was telling me all these men. Like, I, you know, I, that's just what I would do. Let me tell you about this bitch, man. What's mm -hmm. her name? Alicia. Like, let's be real. You don't you don't think therapists go home and tell their family, like, what's, like you would not believe this one bitch who came up here. Like, you don't, you don't. You don't think so? I, I mean, I don't know. So I, I started therapy and it was really good for me mm. because I was an angry little nigga. Like I was an angry mother. Oh, you think I'm angry? No, I, I never said that. Like, oh my God. I think it's this barely ever was angry. Nigga, it's crazy. <laughs> nigga said, you think I'm angry? Where the fuck did that come from? No, I was saying, I was angry. Mm. I started doing therapy and I, you know, like mm. I was, and you just said like you used to be wilding and now I hear a different but side I, I of you. But I feel like it's, so it's just growth. Like, it's, it's like, I'm 25 now. You're still young as shit. I'm young, but I'm, like, so mature. I'm, like, the mom, like, out of all my friends that come around. Sometimes they be like, whoa, hold on. I'm not looking for a dad or a mom. I'm looking for a friend. You so cap. I swear. It, it, I feel like at 25, uh, everybody was like that. Like, man, I'm just so grown now. Like, I'm just No, over I it. really, like, like and I, I, I've, been, I've been holding my own weight since I've been, like, once I turned 18 and I walked across that graduation stage, two years later, I mean, two months later, I moved to Atlanta and I've been on my own ever since. No, I'm not taking away from that. I no, I'm, I'm just seeing more that. so, like, I, I, I forced myself to be an adult. Mm. When I was 16, I would get into it with my mom. I'd be like, Mom, I can't wait until I'm 18. <laughs> and I, I definitely did what I had to do. So what, what we got coming up, man? You got this. Um, I seen the freestyle you did. Well, Amp, that was dope. Um, How are you, like, preparing to drop some more music? Because you got So I'm about to drop a mixtape. What's the name? Like, an actual mixtape. So it's it's a couple of names we're, we're choosing from, but um, either Gorgeous Gangsta. Mm-hmm. You might get a little gorgeous gangster volume one. You might even get a volume two or a rap puzzle. You know, that kind of correlates the hair and the music. Um, but it's going to be like an old type of mixtape, like not an EP just yet, but a mixtape. Like I'm going to be freestyling on a whole bunch of beats and stuff. Mm. And, you know, like kind of how like Nikki used to do her playtime is over and beam me up Scotty. That's kind of what we're going to do. And we're trying to do that by the month of Pride, um, June or yeah, like mid June. So yeah, I, I I um I was looking at the iTunes, and you said you never dropped the project, but there's like a few projects on here. There's no project. Singles. So, okay, so they all singles, mm -hmm. but it, it was under albums, I guess. But it was just singles. Mm -hmm. Damn. You 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 prepared for what's about to happen next for this music shit? Yeah. Do you are you planning on reaching out to to anybody? Because you still want to get features, and you got relationship with people, so you don't yeah. have to get endorsed, but you can. It's work. Um. Yes, I, but I want to get to the point where like people are like, yo, put me on that track clip. Mm. I don't want to hunt nobody down. I don't because, you know, I know how that feels. Like I know when people used to have to hunt me down, it's not a good feeling. Mm. I want people to come to me like, bitch, let me get on one of your songs because you was a little lit bitch and you coming up. You know, that's how I want to be. So I don't. So you wouldn't reach out to uh, a, um, a Jocelyn or like a Cardi. Do you still have those relationships? Mm hmm. You wouldn't reach out and be like, yo, like, um, come on. Yeah. Man. Come but on. I just feel like I said, I love being self-made. I respect it. I do. I respect it. 
But if a nigga got Cardi B in his pocket, call Cardi B. Like, yo, keep getting this song. But I just feel like that's so unprofessional because I used to be her hairstylist. Okay. I'm not trying to call her about no music. Cardi, when I did her up freestyle, she commented and she was like, so dope. I'm so proud of you, mm. Cliff. Because she, she seen when I first started trying to rap. Um, Right now, I just want to prove myself. Okay. I, I just, I, I feel like still I haven't proved, proven myself as an artist yet. Once I prove myself, I feel like it'll be like this. Like it'll be, and that's respectable. It's commendable. Yeah. Like, you can't, you really can't. I might joke about it. You can't be mad at that. Yeah. Um. How do you? Just curious. How do you feel about um? Because you was with Jocelyn before she like kind of like blew up as the no, artist. No, she was already. She was like lit, but she ain't make. She was making music, but she wasn't. She wasn't. The do it like it's my B day. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Well, I ain't gonna lie. When I used to work with Jocelyn, Jocelyn used to want that shit so bad, and mm. I feel like she deserves whatever she has going on. I feel like she really deserves it. I remember going to the studio with her, and I used to see so much potential in her just being some type of like Latino superstar. Um, just because I feel like she has star power. Like Jocelyn can really actually dance. You might like think I'm joking, but she knows how to dance and. You know, I just used to see like a star power in her. Like I used to, I really feel like in the Latino world, Jocelyn could really be like a Beyonce over there. Mm. And 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 it's just like she has the sex appeal. She has like the look. She's a beautiful woman. And I'm just so happy that she's finally getting what she has worked hard for. Mm. No, I, I, I commend that. I fuck with it. I, I, somebody had asked me about how I feel about the song. And I, I was like. I don't really care for it, but I respect the fact that like, I mean, you gotta remember that shit is stuck in your head every time you yeah, hear it. Yeah, but she I love the the grind though. Like yeah. she it's kinda it kinda reminds me of Cardi B. Like when like she kept she was on Love and Hip Hop, I think. I don't know if that was it. Was yeah. That it? And she was saying she wanna be rapping nigga, niggas. DJ Self kinda like put her to the side. I know he feels like that's, that's about what that. people are doing with me, <laughs> yeah. right? It's okay though. So the you, underdog always comes out on top. It's gonna come out. It's gonna come out. Yeah. It's gonna be dope. I fuck with it, man. I appreciate the conversation. I appreciate you pulling up. No problem. Um, when can when are you dropping the mixtape? You got a date yet or? Uh oh. Soon. <laughs> you know, niggas get quiet. Niggas look to. The... Soon. Some Yo, how was the? Uh, I appreciate it. How was the team going though? Um, like it's going good. We kind of just started working like last week, but within the last week, we kind of been on it. Mm. It's about to be pride. Like we can't be playing around. So, one of y'all, um, like, what's some of the things that you're saying that's like? super different or that you can really see just like staying on top of me and having structure because i feel like i'm the type of person let's say if i'm teaching somebody a one-on-one -on -one class or if i have did like i have surgery next week if it was up to me i would just be resting but i, mm -hmm. I know for a fact like they'll be behind the scenes still working kind of trying to get everything together that way when i come back it's just like work 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 pride pride okay performance here do this do that like we you know the grind doesn't stop so and i feel like that's what i needed for so many years with my mm -hmm. music just somebody to put like that extra push yeah do you so are you so because i i see your gram and i don't really see a lot i still see hair and stuff like are you done with it or i'm like done with it. i'm like trying to uh, exit like i'm i'm trying to teach the girls okay my craft so they can stop running around here with these thin sewings and stuff and they can you know get their little raggedy lace frontals and stuff together that's what i'm trying to do but if they don't take advantage of it, then... What is hard? Like, why you say you trying... Is it... Just people just be feeling like they made it already. Mm. So you think it's harder to try to do the classes than do No, it ain't like... harder. Nigga, I'm what is saying... it then? Tell me. I'm asking you. You said it is because they feel like they made it. No, wait. I feel like I'm drinking too much. Hold on. You said what? <laughs> I'll fuck with it. Niggas probably never seen this clip ever. Like, <laughs> nigga, this is probably the dopest shit. So I'm asking... Cause you like you trying to get the girls to get their own shit popping for mm -hmm. so them wet as thin as so yeah so wins whatever it is right. Yeah. I'm Lace just punch. trying to show them how to like literally have that finished polished look. And if you're if you feel like you're a stylist and you can't grow from me, the fucking goat like the OG goat, <laughs> then that's on you. So I'm and I'm asking is do you think it's hard to get those? People I'm not to come persuading see. nobody to take a class with me. It's either mm -hmm. you gonna do it or how you... is it going though? It's classes. going really good. Okay, all right. I mean, but you know how many hairstylists it is out there? It's a lot, nigga. You came from you came to Atlanta, like. But do you think it was it, it helped your um career? I think of course, it, Atlanta is lit. Yeah. Talk to me about you see you see people make these funny jokes about you going to Atlanta to chase your dream, and they joke about it. Mm -hmm. Talk to me like it's really like that though. I, I mean, I feel like it has to be in you. Mm. Like you have to be a grinder, a hustler. If you're not that, it ain't gonna work. Mm. Okay. 
Well, no, I appreciate you uh for pulling up. Um, no make problem. sure you keep me updated with the uh. I will with the with the music the and shit. Tape. And thanks for taking a drink with me because you, you was no like, problem, man. I'm I'm fucked up. You ain't even <laughs> fucked up, man. Yes, I. Am. It's Cliff Vermeer, right? Yeah, Cliff Vermeer, everybody. Mr. J Hill, it's a wrap. Period. Ah.